strength and this philosophy, this idea, what to speak about is truth. It comes into fact, but it's truth. It's beyond fact. It's truth. So we live in this strength of the truth. Meister Eckhart said, between God and me, there is no in between. That is the truth. That is the truth between God and me. There's no between. That word does not fit in any discussion about the divine presence within each and every one of us. When we commune with the divine presence, we're communing with our highest self. That is what is within each and every one of us, that part of us that is really all of us. That sense of self with kind of the big, big S, self, not the self as in just my body, just my name, my profession, that self, but the greatest and the greater self, that which is inseparable from the divine, from God. I'm going to use that word a lot this morning, God. So if you don't like the word God for, for whatever reason, replace that. You can replace it with television. You can replace it with dog. You can replace it with nature. You can replace it with divine presence. Whatever word you want to replace it with, go ahead. God. Our communing with divine presence with God is our bridge to that divine intelligence that is within us. Yes, whatever we're thinking, whatever is going on in our lives, you know, God is. God is there. We are all part of it. But our intentional communion with that divine intelligence is what bridges any gap between what we have decided we want to uh, require in our lives, declare into our lives, our dreams, our even our hopes and wishes, there is possibly a gap between, especially with hopes and wishes, between um, thinking it and having it, experiencing it. But the divine in you is revealing itself as you all the time. It's a communion between us and all of creation. Doesn't happen just between me and God, but you and God, all of us and God. So I want to ask you what you've done lately to commune with your self, with the big ass, your highest self, to exchange intimate thoughts and feelings on a deep spiritual level with the divine in you. Yes, all your thoughts are heard, just like I said before, but it's that intentional, purposeful use of this communication that I'm talking about. Because we all have barriers to connecting with the divine intelligence. We, we begin our lives, depending on what philosophy we are brought in, by praying to God. And then as we begin to transform our thinking, we start praying through God. And eventually we transcend so that we are praying with and ultimately as God. When we realize that each and every one of us and God are one, there is an at one mint. So what can we do to release any barriers that we have in this communion? Well, we have to remember that God is where we are, who we are all the time. Each of us is God showing up as Jay or PJ or Barbara, or Steve, Caressa, whatever. And this divine intelligence continues to flow no matter what is happening in our lives. It doesn't matter if our lives suck right now or if everything is, is fabulous and our, and our pockets are full of money. And our health is vibrant and fabulous. It matters not. God is always with us. God is always there. God is always a part of that experience. 
In the Science of Mind book, Dr. Holmes says, we are in an infinite mind, and infinite mind is also in us. It is by this mind that we think. Now, he's not talking about the brain mind. He's talking about the greater mind, the that which the brain computes, that which the brain is used to um, bring into our awareness. He continues with, this mind is eternal, therefore we are eternal. This mind is complete, therefore we are spiritually complete, though we do not appear to be so. <laughs> though we may not appear to be, to be so, might be a little more proper. Although many people believe we are not um, complete. Perfect, holy, and complete. That's what we are spiritually. That's what we are um, born as in a spiritual sense. How we connect, how we commune with that perfection, with that wholeness, with that completeness is what I'm talking about today. How we take communion to that idea. You know, between our body and our soul or our essence, um, there's no in between there. There's no duality between our bodily experience and our spiritual experience. And when we understand that our spiritual identity is one with the divine, then we realize we're never really alone because God's always there. We're each filled with the power, the presence, the love, the joy, the beauty, the wisdom of the divine. It's right there. It's with us. And it's unique with us, uniquely with us, but at the same time is with all. It is individually with us, but it really is indistinguishable with, with anybody else's experience of it. We're like a flask that's ready to be filled. So I want us to take communion seriously. Now, I know you, especially those who brought up in Catholicism, you're thinking about communion as this whole thing with the wafer and the prayer and the drinking the wine and all that represents. But realize that that is a ritual for you to take in and communicate with God. Really, that's ultimately what's going on. You are, you are connecting yourself intentionally and purposefully with that highest power that is within you, but communing with it so that everything that's going on in your life is through that idea, through that power, through that wisdom. Meister, Meister Eckhart wrote the most powerful prayer. It's not the it's not the quote you're thinking. The most powerful prayer, one well nigh omnipotent, he says, and the worthiest work of all, is the outcome of a quiet mind. The quieter it is, the more powerful, the worthier, the deeper, the more telling, and more perfect the prayer is. Now, let's not think of prayer as even spiritual mind treatment. Prayer can be a combination of things. Spiritual mind treatment, affirmative prayer, is a tool, is a, uh, a tool with um, steps in it to bring into our lives, to reveal into our lives healing and uh, intuition, uh, wisdom, et cetera, et cetera. But you can do that without actively using that specific tool. So don't get confused with the idea of prayer. Continuing with Meister Eckhart, he says, to the quiet mind, all things are possible. What is a quiet mind? A quiet mind is one which nothing weighs on, nothing worries which free from ties and from all seeking is wholly merged with God. And in that merging, no deed is too small. No deed is too large. 
no idea. All ideas actually are significant. The quiet mind is a trusting mind in ourselves, remembering who we are, ourselves as God. We are God. We are an individualization of that power and that presence that created everything. And when we open our hearts, when we quiet our minds and our souls, we receive purposefully the love, joy, and wisdom. I'm not saying that it's not there when we're not in some sort of prayer or spiritual practice. What I'm saying is the power of it and how we use it, how we want to reveal it into our lives is on purpose, is in intention when we are in communion. And thus, we can also release any barriers or old stories that we've told ourselves that get in the way of experiencing our best life. Whatever that looks like, you get to decide what that looks like for you. And this opens and this open and quiet mind allows us to truly feel the divine connection that is actually always there to the divine intelligence, to divine wisdom, to uh, the presence, the source and substance of all, whatever you want to call it. And thus, we are in the position to receive our greatest good as we describe it. And that could be a goal, that could be love, that could be bodily healing, that could be a financial thing, that could be in some sort of creativity, a job, relationships, whatever. Some people prefer solitude. They say their peace of mind depends on this. Others say they would be better off in church. If you do well, you do well wherever you are. If you fail, you fail wherever you are. Your surroundings don't matter. For God is with you everywhere, in the marketplace as well as in seclusion, or in the church, or right here and now. If you look for nothing but God, nothing or no one can disturb you. God is not distracted. God is everywhere. God is not distracted by a multitude of things. God can handle everything. God can multitask. That is kind of a little bit of Meister Eckhart there. I love that quote. I love that idea. Nothing can distract God. God can handle it all. Whatever you need handled, turn it over to the universe. Do your part in mind, in body, in finding allies, and in, in taking action here and there. But your biggest action, your strongest action is in your communion. And communion is like um, bandwidth, you know, bandwidth with in the internet. It's kind of a there's a range of frequencies going on, but there's a signal that only you can submit to your highest self. Yes, we all share that highest self in that it is God, but your signal is the one that has to be boosted. And when we boost our signal for bandwidth in, on the internet coming into our home, we pay with money. We pay money for a stronger signal. And there is a coinage to pay, but that coinage is mental in, in that bandwidth for our communion with God. We must widen that bandwidth with the power of conviction, the power of our, our spiritual practice, the power of our love and compassion. When we have love and compassion and kindness and respect for one another, for our community, we are communing, communing, with God, with that divine spirit. And in that, commu in that communication, 
comes our greatest intelligence, our greatest beauty, our greatest revelations of wonderful experiences in our lives. More Meister Eckhart. Big Meister Eckhart today. God is at home. It's we who have gone out for a walk. It is we who are mind wandering, whether our versus dreaming. Dreaming is active. Dreaming is using our imagination in an intentional way. Mind wandering is just allow, just. It's not a bad thing, mind wandering, but when we want to be intentional, when we want to commune with God, then we want to be on purpose. We don't want to be out for a walk. We can do it walking, but we don't want to be out for a walk. We don't want to be away from home, home. To realize God is not just living, but God is life is to experience a connection to God. That's how we break our barriers. Happiness is a state of mind. Joy is a yeah. state of be being at one with the presence within. And joy, we heal anything that is ill or diseased, not just in our bodies, but in our lives in general. To realize God is truth, absolute, and ready to serve is to commune with spirit. When your gut feeling speaks, listen to it. Listen to that inspiration it brings. When you seek inspiration, open your heart. Get quiet in mind. Not necessarily what's around you, but in mind. And listen. In the silence, there is peace. In the silence, there is unspoken joy. In the silence, there is release from a world full of chaos and noise to experience love and compassion is to experience a connection to God. Got unanswered prayers. Remember life and truth expresses itself through each of us. And when we practice love every day, when we watch our thoughts, Watch our tongues, our deeds, our words, our prayers, so that nothing contrary to love finds expression there. We are communing with God. When you clearly realize that this is a, an intelligent universe, run in principle, you experience your connection with God. This is a principle. This is a principle like gravity, like, like the idea that... Um, uh, a triangle is 180 degree angles, three of them. That makes a triangle. Matters not if that triangle was drawn 80,000 years ago or yesterday. Spirit has no limitation, my friends, and is infinite, all-knowing, timeless, boundless, unconditional with its love. It is the source and substance of our supply. It is the creation of all the manifesting the manifester of our beliefs without exception. It doesn't change its stripes like the triangle. When we realize God is a soul spirit, we experience our connection with God. We are spirit, you're spirit, I'm spirit. Spirit cannot die. Spirit never goes away. Our true self was really never born and will never die. Our highest self was never born and can never die. In that space, we are eternal, we are divine, we are unchanging spirit. That's our true nature. Richard Rohr wrote in his book, Immortal Diamond, The Search for Our True Self, all we humans are doing is allowing God to complete the circuit within us until we both see from the same perspective. Perspective. What is our perspective? When our perspective of life is through, as, and with our communion with that divine spirit with God, that's when things really vibrate at the speed of the divine. That's things when really start showing up. That's when we really start busting through, soaring through life. When we have that diamond in our mind, 
when you feel out of it, when you have unanswered prayers, it's like you're looking out on the street through a window made of fluted glass. Ever seen fluted glass? Or if you look look from um, under a, uh, and a, through a glass, through the bottom of, the, of a glass, it's a distortion. There's this distortion. And sometimes we, we see life in this distorted way because our perception is through this, this idea of not being connected and this not being connected, not communing with God. It's a false vision, and it cause us, causes us to know that, well, it causes us to see life as an illusion. It's an illusion to the degree that we allow it to be. This is the truth. This is the truth, and you might not be able to see it on the bottom, but some of this ideas is written right here in the gold and again this is meister eckhart and the full quote is the eye with which i see god is the same with which god sees me my eye and god's eye is one eye and one sight and one knowledge and one love my eye and god's eye is one eye and one sight and one knowledge and one love but do you want that to be all the time? Then you have to commune with God purposefully. You don't want to do it in a prayer, fine. You do it in med meditation, you do it in mindfulness, you, doing, you do it with being out in nature, but you feel that energy. You're not, you're not stuck in the idea of, of goals and... Um, and things like that, that that distract you, actually, in many ways distract you, bring on chaos. There's a quietness, there's a silence, there's a power, there's a beauty, there is a love that in a communion with God, a purposeful, intentional communion, however that takes place, that power comes to you, that, that perspective and perception of life as something that is for you, becomes the preeminent idea of your life, the perception and the perspective of your life. If some responsibility or task seems too great for you, relax and surrender to life. Remain in the now. Commune with divine uh, energy, the universal flow. Radiate with an open heart. Cut through to clarity by communing with source. Remember, realize, reconnect to that idea that you are one with God. And then that task not, does not become just your task, just your business. It becomes our business. It becomes the universe's business. And all of the education and the ideas, all of the resources of the universe then start coming to you, then start showing up for you, whatever that looks like, in people, in ideas, in knowledge, in education, in perspective. And when those things happen that are that um, you're, you're looking through that distorted glass, then go outside or go somewhere and laugh and howl and be a warrior to an open heart and a liberated soul. Cry out, express yourself. Get it out there to commune with spirit, to commune with life, to open yourself up to that which will further empower you because you're always empowered, but, but intentionally empower you to take that next step that is not distracted by the illusion of seeing something through a distorted glass. Remember, when you speak to yourself, you speak to God and you speak as God. That's important. That's powerful. That's going to take you in a direction. When you realize that, when you purposefully change that, those words, those thoughts, those ideas, and thus those beliefs that don't work for you anymore. 
that get in your way of a happy life, of a life of grace, of a life full of love and accomplishments and transcending. That is taking communion. That is the true sense of taking communion. Let's do it. Let's do it right now, forevermore, intentionally, on purpose, with love. <sighs> Take communion and live your best life. Namaste.